<sighs> coffee and the caffeine consumption from coffee has actually become a contested topic over recent years in health circles. Some people say it's healthy, some people say it's not healthy, but as always, let's look at the research and see what the research actually says. Let's take a look. Go. I personally believe hormonal health is the key to longevity and vitality, especially uh, you know from a young age till until you're late in life. If you can achieve a good hormonal balance, you're gonna be healthy all the way through. Uh, so I think focusing on hormonal health is the high leverage way to optimize your health in general. Whether it's your circulation, gut health, uh, your brain health, your sexual health, anything uh, falls under the realm of your endocrine system. So by optimizing your hormones, you're gonna be able to, uh, in a high leverage way, focus on bringing your whole body as a system into uh, whole health. And I think that's one of the big pitfalls of, of mainstream medicine right now, allopathic medicine, is the fact that they teach the doctors as they train them, they teach people to specialize. They teach people to only look in one area, but not to see the body as a whole. Uh, so that's one of the biggest issues. So with that in mind, uh, I wanna look through that lens at something like caffeine or coffee to really see whether or not it, it truly is healthy. And that's what I mean when I say healthy. If something is good for your hormones, uh, that's, that's what I consider healthy. So first off, caffeine has been linked in a dose-dependent manner to an increase in cortisol elevation. So a lot of people cite that as uh, something that's unhealthy for the body. Obviously, if you have chronically high cortisol levels, that is considered unhealthy, especially because it suppresses uh, reproductive hormones and, and androgens. So there's definitely a threshold after which when you drink, uh, you know, an acute amount of coffee, like say if you drink, for some people it'd be two cups of coffee, for some people it might be eight cups of coffee. It, it'll all depend on your own chemistry. But usually when you cross that stress threshold uh, and your body starts to have a stress response from the caffeine, uh, you know it. You kind of like tingle, uh, you become really wired, and then potentially even really tired, which is interesting. It's a, a symptom of that, that excess cortisol, that excess fight or flight response. But you don't want to cross that threshold. However, let's take a look at the research when people consume caffeine under that threshold because there's actually some really cool benefits to it. Specifically, my favorite way to use caffeine is pre-workout, and uh, you're gonna see why, because I'm gonna show you, there's a ton of studies showing the benefits of using caffeine before training. So let's take a look. For example, this study demonstrated that caffeine before a workout was able to increase anaerobic training capacity and muscular endurance significantly in the workout, and then this study showed a significant increase in muscular strength on both bench press and leg press from pre-workout caffeine consumption. So is this just a fluke or is caffeine actually a really great pre-workout stimulus? Well, this study right here and this study, oh, this one too, oh yeah, this one, oh, and these two as well, they all say the same thing, that caffeine is incredibly good at increasing muscular strength and uh, workout and training capacity. So it's definitely something that you wanna include if, if you like caffeine, include it before the workout, especially not later in the day or, or at an excessive level, but right before you work out, you're gonna actually see a giant increase in exercise output. But this good stuff isn't all that there is to it. Caffeine has also been shown in research to increase testosterone production in the body, and this is due to the fact that it increases cyclic AMP. So the, it's, it's kind of like forsklin, where forsklin is going to increase cyclic AMP production and then downstream increase testosterone production because of it. So if you can keep your caffeine consumption under that stress threshold uh, where your body still can receive the health benefits from it, it's also something like coffee is also extremely high in antioxidants, which is very good for your body, fights the free radical stress. So if, if you're keeping it on, in, a, in a moderate consumption, you're going to have some very good health benefits from it. So with all that in mind, I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if, if you want to see more videos like this, subscribe to the channel, share the video. If you think you have a friend or family member who would like to hear this kind of information. And if you want to learn more about some foods that I think every man should be eating on a weekly basis or, or regular basis in general, go over to 30manfoods.com. I have a grocery list for you. It's completely free. Uh, just just put your email. It's gonna The autoresponder will send you a link to the PDF. Uh, and then you can just print the PDF out. It's really easy, or you can keep it on your, on your mobile device. And just bring it to the store with you. Take all the guesswork out of your grocery shopping. Just eat these foods and you're gonna be hormonally healthy. Thanks for watching.